So if we remove the alcohol, it's very important to have a plan. Then what do I do instead? In my case, I picked up triathlon. If like me, you're someone that struggles with the mental health. Yes, I know it's a pain in the ass. But you are not alone. As you'll see from this podcast. In this podcast episode, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Dad, top Ironman triathlete and the author of the international bestseller, Executive Loneliness, Nick Johnson. Amongst other things, he talks about his journey of self-discovery from hitting rock bottom in 2018. I'm interested to hear about your journey of sobriety because that's something that certainly I'm very interested in, but I'm sure people listening would be interested in. Have you found, does it get easier? Is it something you always have to work at? Yeah, so about sobriety then, and where I'm living and working in Asia, and I have friends and contacts who, who work, you know, as psychologists, therapists, I have friends who own rehabs and run the recovery cycle. In general, the numbers I'm hearing, probably 10% of expat men uh, who are living and working in Asia are suffering from an addiction such as alcoholism or drug use. Drug use. Many people say the numbers are much higher, but I'm talking 10% here might be the ones who are clinically dependent. At then you have a huge area of gray zone. And we call them the gray zone drinkers. And uh, for that space is something that I'm working with myself. Now I'm also a, a sober coach where I'm helping others who might want to change their relationship with alcohol to first perhaps reduce it, getting on, somehow under control or, or stop for some periods and to change their life. Because it's diff difficult and challenging to do this by yourself. I had help in the... 12 step program with it where I came and, and, and that really helped me. Uh, but it, if you do it all by yourself, then it, it's difficult to know. Perhaps you don't have all the toolbox and everything else, but it comes back to also being connected with other like-minded because if we remove something, which is such a big part of our society from our lives, then we might start to feel isolated and lonely. We're sitting at home. We don't want to go and see the friends. So if we remove the alcohol, it's very important to have a plan. Then what do I do instead? In my case. I picked up triathlon, so I signed up for a cycling club, a swim academy, a running club, and I signed up for some races. I set some goals, and I was looking forward to that. So if I would have spent you know, 10, 15 hours a week at the bar before perhaps as with my mates watching sport and drinking beer, I replaced those 10, 15 hours with something productive, uh, cycling and so on. So I get out there, seeing friends, getting exercise, and it completely transformed my life. And that is the way I would recommend anyone to do it, to really, really think through it. And that is best done perhaps with someone who's been there before a way coach who's qualified to do that. You made a really good point that I think it's just the idea of removing alcohol in your life. It's a nice idea, but I think it's unrealistic unless you replace it with something. Alcohol is a coping strategy. And that sometimes if you can manage, it can be a really effective coping strategy depending on your relationship. with. But I think. Obviously, alcohol relaxes you and can be a good, can be a potentially positive thing in your life. Me and a friend who do jujitsu, we both drive to jujitsu. So after jujitsu, we'll go to the pub and we'll have a non-alcoholic beer. And actually, I think just the technology of non-alcoholic beer 20 years ago didn't taste great. But now it really doesn't taste any different. For example, non-alcoholic Guinness to me tastes just like Guinness. And I think it's a placebo that actually, well, I'm, I'm in a pub. I'm with a friend, we're having a conversation, we're drinking what looks like a beer and tastes like a beer, but I can drive home because it's non-alcoholic. Um, and I get all the benefits that I need from that night out, that connection with a friend w without the next day, the, the anxiety and the, so I can totally see that I think, and I think obviously the demand of non-alcoholic drinks obviously kind of speaks that actually it's something that people want. People want all the benefits of the socializing, but actually if they could reduce or even erase alcohol is something that people would want, I think. Absolutely. And no, I completely agree with you. And I also drink the non-alcoholic beer and I found that a very good replacement uh, to have at home or when you go out and I cannot wait to taste the, the Guinness Zero. It hasn't come to Asia yet, I think, or at least not where I'm going. So that's something for my bucket list next time in Europe then. I was very cynical because I used to, years and years ago, I ran, a, I ran an Irish theme pub. So I got quite, and I thought, 
Oh, Can Guinness. Can Guinness, it, 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 it's a drink that I thought this isn't going to travel. And I was amazed that actually, oh my goodness, this looks and tastes exactly the same. My wife, she did a 10K run at the weekend with a friend. And at the end of it, they were given a non-alcoholic beer. Uh, and I think that's a positive thing because I think we all, we all need the connection, whether it's going out for a cycle ride or whether it's a beer after it. I think we, that's really important. I wouldn't ever want to lose that. And I think, I think the problem is, is that when you're feeling depressed, often the last thing you feel like doing is socializing. I think, and obviously it's a big gender generalization, but I think men tend to retreat into our caves. I, I, I need to fix this on my own, which actually, from my experience, is the worst thing to do. You're like, no, you need to go out and talk to people. Whenever times I've lost work, or I've just not been in a good mental place, you know, if I just like, I'm going to hunker down and work it out myself is actually the opposite advice I would give anyone. Like, no, get outside, go and talk to a friend that you trust. That, that's, where, that's where it will help you. That's where you'll overcome this problem. I completely agree with you. If I'm going back to when I hit my rock bottom, it started by me isolating. I so, said, you know, I could, I had so much issues and, and drama at work for myself that I was not even ready to discuss it with my wife at the time. And instead of digging into it and trying to explain myself, it was easy to just divorce and isolate myself. But then that meant that I didn't also tell my friends what was going on. And, and when you're trying to act the whole time, like everything is normal, but we are really in pain inside that, that imbalance there. And I call it smiling depression in my book, because many times perhaps the people who are smiling the most are the ones who are feeling the worst internally. And I can remember just being really scared that someone will catch me that I'm not feeling well internally. So you just put on that smile and of course, it's easier also if they can't blow drinks because you forget it and you, you relax, right? So people have actually no idea what I was going through, but uh, that I felt bad. But eventually I started to gain so much weight and then people started to at least question that. Yeah, I think you're right because you can, and I, I do this as well. You can hide behind humor and they, they, everyone's got a, the face they show the world is very different from often how you're feeling. And I think that's why it's good to have a couple of friends who know you well enough to go, are you really all right? Because I'm not convinced. I have a daughter and two sons and sometimes the, my sons go, oh, I don't have enough friends. I said, you need one. You literally, as a man who's nearer 50 than 40, I can assure you, you need one, but it needs to be a good one. It needs to be one you can call at two in the morning when you are at rock bottom. And the thing, it all, this always comes back, as you said, you've been giving back in that it always comes back to you. It's really nice to help other people. I think as human beings, we aren't designed to be on our own. We're designed to be living tribes in packs. We're mammals. And I suppose, yeah, it reaffirms your strength when you can help someone else. Yeah, it certainly does. And that feeling is, is something that I hadn't experienced so much before I came into the recovery world and fully understood that concept. But it's something that I will always keep and keep and also if we can spread and have this conversation then we normalize this conversation so which i think is great james that you're inviting for this conversation we need more of this yeah i i'd certainly want to my father who sadly passed away a few years ago he had a breakdown and i imagine really from seeing your book it was an executive it was a case of having a, a bully of a boss and not knowing how to sort of, I mean, these days it would be, it'd be, it would go to be an HR tribunal and it would hit have the support. Maybe in the seventies, it just wasn't there or it wasn't socially acceptable for a man to say, I'm really struggling. I'm, I'm having a bit of a breakdown I'm, as I'm sure you feel the same. I hope that the work we do, be it with books or podcasts means that the landscape for our children, or all of our children, but I suppose, especially for my sons. It's it, when they're my age, maybe it's just more acceptable to put your hand up and go, yeah, no, I need some help with this. I, I I'm, I'm really don't know how to do this. I certainly hope so. I have a teenage son myself who's 15 and uh, we have really, really open conversations about our feelings, about challenges in life and the much deeper level than I ever had with my father. And, and for example, my son, I ask him from time to time, anything you worry about in the future, any anxiety. And he said, yeah, dad, I hear that so much AI. I worry that there won't be any jobs when I'm done with school. And just the fact that he shared that. And then I, I asked him, okay, what do you mean with that? Can you clarify that? 
and he shared a lot what he felt about it and so on. We discussed it and then after, you know, what we asked, I asked him, what can you do about it? And he was thinking what he can study, what he can do and so on. So we kept having a really deep, good conversation for probably an hour about it at the end of end of it all i said by the way it's great that you want to go and study you want to do this and uh, he actually said that he wants to become a police in sweden it's a, a police school and it, it's in demand and the jobs will be there and after all of it he, he felt much better about having had a conversation and i just said by the way i'm an entrepreneur as you know i'm, I'm i always need people so don't worry should it does not work out with any of your plans you know i'm here for you and, and you, you can get some work experience with me and then when I checked in with him a bit later on, how, you know, if he was worried about the future and jobs, he, he didn't have that concern anymore. Yeah, well, that, it sounds like you're doing a great job as a dad, because actually that's the nice thing is from what you've just said is actually you were, you worked out the problem together. And I'm, I'm guessing he's been inspired by your journey to, to actually feel, do you know what? It's okay to be honest about stuff. Uh, dad has shown me the path actually. It's really important to be, your mental health is really important. So that's great. And that might be something that even when he becomes a dad, that he goes, my dad showed me how to do this. And I don't think it's that our parents, our dads didn't want to. I just imagine they weren't shown. They didn't know that it was maybe socially acceptable for men to have that problem and have those conversations. So no, it sounds like you're doing great work. I really hope you got something for this podcast and to find out more about the work that Nick does and to contact him. Visit his website. I'll put the link in the show notes. All right, wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care. Hey, Dad, here's a word from our sponsor. Do you miss having something interesting to read in those very odd five-minute breaks from the trench warfare that can be family life? If so, check out www.swifthalf.com. Sign up to their newsletter for jaw-dropping news, some light-hearted nonsense, exclusive offers and guides.